In this video, you're going to get a complete overview of Google Stitch. This is Google's prototype and mock-up software using AI. Here's a quick example of something that we're going to build, a meditation app mock-up with tons of different screens, and then they even have virtual predictive heat maps using AI. You're also going to learn how to take these designs and import them into AI Studio to make them a reality. So we're gonna use Google Stitch, which is an AI app that's free to use by Google, which allows you to design and prototype both mobile and web applications. So I'm sending off a prompt, and this is using Google's Gemini 3.0 thinking, but you can also use Fast and 2.5 Pro. And what I wanted to do was help me generate a meditation app with whimsical design, a prototype. So right off the bat, basically it comes up with some ideas for some core screens. So onboarding, home screen, player screen, journal screen, settings screen. So we can have it basically generate one of them or specific ones or just click design all of them, which is what I'm going to do. And then here you can see generate variation. So I did not have that turned on, but maybe on the next one, I'll have it turned on. So it generates three variations. And then on the left side, we can attach screenshots, add a website URL. And then here we can see again, the model that it's using. So this reminds me a little bit of like Figma, for example, it's kind of a that's really where it's going after, especially like Figma Make, which is Figma's AI designer, which is basically an AI mock-up generator. So I'm curious to see how Google Stitch does in comparison. But here we can see it also has an estimated time of 80 seconds. Kind of nice that it has that estimated time right there. Although it'd be nice if that was a little bit bigger, like up on the top or like a countdown, just so people don't miss it. But I'll go ahead, we'll pause the video, and we'll come back once we have all of these screens generated for us to take a look at. So it generated it. It really only took about like a minute to generate all of these mock-up designs. And let's just read really quickly some more information about what it did. It just kind of describes what it created and what the purpose of each page is. It looks like it also used Nano Banana to like generate images inside of this. or I wonder if like are each of these nano banana itself or is this like code and it generated nano banana inside of it? I'm kind of curious. So let's see what our different options are here. So we have our generate, you can generate variations, regenerate, and even a predictive heat map, which is kind of interesting. So it's going to tell us like what things people are going to click on. And you can even do that by uploading your own image and doing a predictive heat map we can edit by adding to chat, annotate, or editing the theme. So let's see the theme. If I change the color, for example, so I would still have to click apply. So I'm guessing it's going to rerun the generations. I don't want to do that right now. We can also annotate. You're getting an annotation powered by Nano Banana. So yeah, so this is, this is fully Nano Banana. I do not think that it's using like it wrote code. I think it literally generated mockups. It generated images basically using Nano Banana, possibly Nano Banana Pro. But let's say I want to describe the change. I'm going to say like improve this copy and apply. So I can't just like change the text. I have to actually have it generate a new version because it's generating images here. While it's doing that, we can keep exploring a little bit. I can preview what this looks like, mobile, tablet, or desktop. I don't know if I click tablet. Okay, so it's just showing me like what the screen would look like on all of those devices. We can go to mobile since that's what we basically asked for. Then, oh, actually, no, there is a view code. So can I, can I see the code? Yeah. So there is code. That's interesting that it did it that way. Okay, so it's code, but it's using also nano banana for for like annotating and doing improvements so here we can see it, it did let us kind of make that text change by annotating powered by nano banana so it probably took that as an input and then maybe wrote the code afterwards but we can also export the code which is nice and we can even export it into ai studio to start building that also is pretty cool maybe we'll do that later in the video we can take this entire app export it to Nano to uh, AI Studio and see if we can have it turn into an actually functional prototype. But the designs itself are, are really very nice. Let's see what else we can do here. Can I select like all of them at once 
or can I only select one at a time? That, it looks like maybe one at a time. And then I can also download it. Yeah, download the code. Just download the code directly. So it just downloaded it. Okay. So let's say we want to make some changes here to this meditation player. Why don't we say I want the image to be a square, not a circle. So just to show you what this iteration could look like as we are kind of continuing to build here. And you can also upload your own images to Canvas here on the bottom. While it's doing that, I want to try this, this heat map feature. So let's do a predictive heat map. It's going to generate the heat map. And I'm curious what it's going to look like. It looks like it's adding it right on the right side of the, of the actual app screen. So it still is a bit bare bones. Like it doesn't look like I can create flows between the different pages. It's like a really, really cool prototype of what it's creating. So here's the heat map, which makes sense. People are going to click on the button most likely, but also says, oh, some people are going to click on the image. It's kind of interesting to see that. I don't know how accurate that is. I actually kind of want to create one for, for this journal since this is a little bit more complicated. So why don't we try that? We'll generate a predictive heat map of this this progress and journal screen as well. And it's going to do that to the side. Over here, it's still regenerating that the edit to the meditation player. So again, under the code under AI Studio, can I upload multiple screens? It looks like I cannot. So I would have to start with one screen. So the export to AI Studio would be starting with one screen and then basically making it real. I'm going to try that in a second. I do want to see what the what the heat map actually looks like here. So that looks like it's just really small. Okay, so we have our heat map here of our progress and journal. It looks like it has people clicking on the top, stats, total minutes. Again, I don't know how accurate it is, but it's cool that they're like experimenting with that and, and adding it in. It's still finishing the meditation player. So we'll see what that looks like. And then once we have that, why don't we try taking one of these designs maybe the like this meditation library and then exporting this into ai studio to go from just like the mock-up and design ideation part here with stitch to actually the building part in ai studio it does seem to be stuck on updating this design so i'm not going to wait around again i think that stitch is still in the early stages and needs some improvement but i'm going to take this meditation library go to edit, or sorry, go to export AI studio, and then just say, make this real and build with AI studio. So basically it's going to get, take the image and then maybe also the code it's giving me as well. And I can just go ahead and click build. This video is brought to you by Mocha, the all-in-one AI app builder that has the database, user authentication, email, and storage all built into one platform. Mocha was the product hunt product of the week, and it's trusted by over 150,000 users. I've been using Mocha myself, and I find it really helpful, especially when I don't want to use multiple platforms, to go from prototype to a deployed app. Here's a time tracking app that I built for myself. And I want to specifically highlight for you how the database is integrated into the platform. So I did not have to build out this database. The AI just decides what data types it needs and it will fully build it into Mocha without you having to integrate with something like Superbase or Firebase. This is super helpful, especially if you're less technical and don't want to deal with multiple platforms. Mocha tends to do a really good job of making apps that just work. And if there are bugs, the AI does a good job of fixing them on its own. Something else I like about Mocha is that it has user authentication through Google by default, which makes it super easy for users to sign in through their Google account. And when you're ready to publish, just click the publish button. You can publish the app and your app will be live on its own URL. And Mocha also has the ability to add your own custom domain to any app that you publish. Mocha makes it really easy to go from idea to app, and it's perfect for building personalized software for your own use cases. There's zero setup, and it's super easy to get started. Click the link in the description to go to Mocha and try it out for free. So now we're in AI Studio, and this is where I think the magic kind of happens between Stitch and, and the actual like AI studio building. This is where like the magic of Stitch is, is that in Google Stitch, you can design mock-up 
And I'm sure they're going to continue adding more features to it. I think it's still a little bit bare bones and, and does need some more improvement. But going from that to actually building in AI Studio, and then I have other tutorials on, on this channel about how to actually go from AI Studio to adding a full Supabase backend and deploying ARM Vercel. So going all the way from design all the way to deployment. So here we can test this out. And now we have like a working app that you can see I'm actually hovering over. And if we click play, for example, I don't know if it actually added. Let's see, it seems like it generated maybe a meditation, but it's not actually saying anything. Let's click like deep focus. So again, I think it might be generating something. I mean, it generated a script, but it's not actually saying anything. So. That would be the next step, basically making sure that this is working correctly. We can also view this on a mobile view. But yeah, looks like, looks really nice. Like this is a lot nicer than going from just prompt to app. Starting with Stitch, like that one previous step is going to give us a much better design mockup that then AI Studio can turn into a functioning app. So pretty cool that it is able to do this. Why don't we do another mock-up from start to finish and, and see what it looks like. So this time let's do a web app instead of a mobile app. And why don't we do this a kind of suggested prompt homepage for a bonsai tree specialty store. So we can go ahead and click generate. And again, it should come up with, actually, I wonder if it's going to come up with all the, the screens again, because this just said homepage. So in this case, I think it's just going to generate the one homepage and then we could have it generate like a checkout page, for example, next. So maybe we'll do that as a next, a next version and experiment a little bit with this generate variations option that Stitch has. So here we have our bonsai tree website. This time I actually used the fast model instead of the thinking with three pro model. I think it still looks really nice. It might just be a little bit more polished if we use the 3.0 pro, but overall, I do think this looks nice. So what I want to try now is see what happens if I say generate a checkout page now. And we can do 3x versions, and I'm going to also use the fast model. So I'm curious here to see what that looks like and how it generates the three different versions. Like, are they going to be completely different? Or is it just going to be slight variations between each version? On the actual mock-up itself, it looks like, you know, fairly basic, pretty straightforward e-commerce page. But overall, it, looked, it does look nice, and it looks like it used, I'm assuming, Nano Banana to generate images of each product here on the actual site. Okay, so here we can see three different versions. It looks like it actually did just kind of like slight variations in the way that like the shipping method is, the payment method. But overall, it's cool that it was able to do that and just kind of give us a choice. I kind of prefer this third one, so I'm going to delete these two and, and bring this one up here. Okay. And then finally, why don't we generate a predictive heat map here of the homepage and, and see what it thinks people are going to click on the most. Now, I assume it would be the shop now button, but I'm curious what it actually is going to do. Okay, so here we have our heat map and we can see it's thinking the most common is going to be this shop now. And then down here, the first category, which makes sense. And then these feature products down here, also shop and cart and the nav bar. Cool. I think it's cool that we have this and it actually would be interesting to maybe I'll do that now, pull in the no code MBA homepage and see what it thinks with this predictive heat map. So here I'm just pasting in an image of like the courses page and then I'll go ahead and actually it doesn't look like I can. That's interesting. So I can't actually do a predictive heat map. I would have to add it to the chat and maybe like generate that could be interesting that I actually like to generate variations of this design. So I could basically take my page, my course page, generate variations using Google Stitch, and then I could do heat maps from there or just get inspired by different ideas that it's able to come up with. While it's doing that, why don't we go ahead and let's do similarly what we did with the, the mobile app, but here with our bonsai tree homepage. Let's export and you can also copy to Figma, which is very cool as well, but let's export to AI studio and say, make this real. And again, we're going to pull that in. It's going to pull in the code and the image and we'll let this generate, but then jump back into stitch to see the variations of the no code MBA course page that it created. 
Hmm. So, okay, that's actually really interesting and, and a good way to know of like how this is working. So what it did is it generated bonsai designs because I think it's going off of what it already has or what it's first generating in the chat, which is a homepage for a website that sells bonsai trees. So it's not like each, each request is independent. Uh, basically, what it did is it took no code MBA site as inspiration and then generated these mockups as a result, which I actually like. I think these are like really nice product cards. This one here is a little bit more like the no code MBA site with the border radius, but it created basically like a, just different versions and different kind of mockups of, of what these, this like an e-commerce site for bonsai trees could look like. So kind of cool. I, I like how these are all different but it did kind of go off of this inspiration. So that's, that's how you would want to use that feature. I think that if we want to start from scratch, we have to go back home, upload that design and say, generate three variations of this mock-up. And then we could see variations of the no code MBA site. So let's try that. I'll jump back into the AI studio mock-up. So here it generated it. I don't know why it needs the camera and the microphone. I don't know what features it built. But here we can see it generated this e-commerce site or kind of the bones of it, at least. If I click on a product, I don't think anything is actually happening. So it basically generated like a landing page. There's a cart, but I don't think I can actually go into the cart. There is a chat. That's probably, oh, that's still not the, the microphone or the camera, but it did add this little AI chat. AI Studio likes to add these AI products into your app or, or like site or whatever you're building, even if it doesn't need it. So something to kind of keep in mind there. But yeah, let's jump back into Stitch. But yeah, kind of cool that it created this. And then now we have the code that we could say to GitHub export key building and cursor, for example. Okay, so here we are in Stitch. I think I did was in the mobile app mode. So it generated mobile app version. So I could have done it in web app mode. So this is helpful to see just different versions of like what the courses could look like and just get, get more inspiration. So I hope that you enjoyed this intro to Google Stitch and how to use it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Is this something you could see yourself using? What do you think of it compared to tools like Figma Make, which are also in the AI prototyping space? And what do you think of some of the features to connect to AI Studio and actually turn your design into a real app? Leave a comment, let me know. Subscribe to the No Code MBA YouTube channel to get more free content like this. And we'll see you in the next video.